Hello and welcome back to part 13 of my tutorial series showing you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. In this video we are going to be finishing the rig in the node view before going on to do the full turnaround. But if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to rig this character or a character of your own, I highly recommend you go check out the other videos that I've made in this series because we go through each stage of the rigging process in great detail. So if we go into the node view, you can see that everything is pretty much finished, but there are a few things that we need to do first before we can move on to the turnaround. So things like adding a deformer to this section here. Um, I want to make a neck hole for the t-shirt and merge the neck. I want to adjust these hands slightly. I need to get rid of these dots, which we were using as a reference point for the pivots. And also there's some cleanup I want to do here, like for example you can see the colour leaking through here, so we need to fix that. So first things first, let's add a deformer to this. So we've got the antenna here, and I'm just going to add a curve deformer. So we'll go to the rigging tool, we'll click the envelope mode, and we'll click and drag here to the middle, and then the other end we will click and drag as well. So now we've got our deformer in there and I'm just going to attach that to the antenna ball so that when we move this, the ball moves with it. I'm gonna add a kinematic output. Fabulous. So now let's go down to the neck and I'm gonna copy and paste that auto patch merge and I'm just gonna call it neck merge. Again, if I'm going too quick for you, go check out the other tutorials because I cover every aspect of building this rig. So if we go into this neck merge, we've got our art sub layers on the right and the auto patch on the left, which is this one. So we wanna get a auto patch of the torso, plug that in there. And we also want the auto patch of the neck. Control H to bring up a composite because at the moment that torso is being merged by the auto patches of the two arms, but we also want it to be merged by the auto patch of the neck. So I'm gonna plug that into there. So now you can see that has successfully merged. However, this red is still here. So we're gonna make a separate element, which is gonna be the neck hole. So I'll move that composite down to here. I'll just move these over slightly and I'm gonna ungroup this. And I'll just put it down here. Let's increase the size of this a little bit. So I'm going to click this torso and I'm going to press Control R and we're going to make a neck hole art layer and I'm going to place that in between the color art and the line art of the torso. So we'll put it there. I'm going to make a peg for it and then I'm going to make it a child of that torso peg there. So we'll come over to the ellipse tool and we're just going to make a circle on the line layer and we'll just have it slightly wider than the neck. And then we can fill that in with our yellow skin color. We do have to cut this shape to the color art of the torso. So we're just gonna take a cable from the color art of that torso, plug it in there, invert it. So now you've got a neck hole, mate. Fabulous. Just gonna change the thickness of that line slightly to match the other ones. So that all looks good, except when you go into the render view and you get this anti-aliasing happening with the red color coming through. So to fix that, we will separate out the neck hole into line art and color art, which is gonna go and we'll plug that next to the line art there. And then with that color art, press Control H and another cutter. And then this is gonna be cut by two things. It's gonna be cut by the auto patch of the neck and also the auto patch of the torso. So there's the auto patch of the neck there. So we can plug that into there. And the auto patch of our torso, which is over here, plug that in there. So when we go into render, that line has disappeared nicely. However, there is some color showing through and that is because we go to this neck hole, we've got it cut by the auto patch of the torso, but I think we want it to be cut by the color art of the torso instead. So let's replace the auto patch of that torso with this color art, take that out. And there we go, that gets rid of that issue. So that's all merged nicely. Fabulous. Something else we have to do is add some more deformers to this. So we'll just add some deformers as we go. So if we get a display node, 
connect it to the neck hole and select display one up here. If you don't have this display menu, you can right click and then just look for display in this menu here. So let's add some deformers here. I'm just gonna add four, I think like that then we'll go back to display all and then we can manipulate that we also need to add some deformers to our torso and our shoulders so let's do that now so we'll take this display and we're just going to connect it to shoulder one we'll go back to display one and then we'll do a deformer for this and we'll do it for the other shoulder this is probably something we should have done before copying over that shoulder and while we're here let's add a deformer to the torso as well so I'll start at the top there come to this corner and I'm gonna do one halfway here that looks good we've got our deformers there and we don't have one for the hip so let's take that display and let's move it over to our hip come back to display all so there we go the hips done so next thing I want to do I just want to clean up this shoulder section because you can see that it's not quite flush with that arm. I'm just gonna go to the shoulder. I'm just gonna move it so that it's flush and then we can move the deformer as well. And we'll do the same with this shoulder as well. So there we go, that's looking a little better. Right, now I wanna get rid of all these dots because the pivots are now in their correct places. Just checking they're not on the overlay layers as well, which they are. And I'm just gonna do those for all the limbs. So the next thing we're gonna fix is this anti-aliasing issue here because we've got the shorts leg and the sleeve. We've got a little bit there as well. That's the same issue we had with this neck. So we can do what we did with the neck where we separate out the sleeve into line art and color art and then mask the color art to the auto patch of the torso and the color art of the arm or something which is a little bit quicker and a little bit easier is we are going to take color art of this arm we're going to make a stroke there and we're going to color it in red and we're going to do the same thing for the legs as well so we'll take this leg and we will put a stroke around here and we'll paint that blue so now when i come into render view that issue has disappeared fabulous now that we've done that i just want to adjust the hands slightly so if i come into the drawing view for the hands i just want to make this a straight line rather than that curved line um, so i'm gonna press alt and that will just get rid of the handles and then i'll do the same with the color as well so just so it's a nice flat line because i want to take this particular line and i want to use that for all the other hand shapes you can see where the wrist is starting to come in that that is showing here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take these control points and just move them up slightly until you see that line disappear like that something else i want to do with the hand actually is I've got a overlay here and that is for when he's holding a prop as I mentioned in a previous video however we can't control the z-depth of that hand overlay which we'll probably need to do when he is holding an item when it comes to animation so what I'm going to do is I am going to clone that hand and then I'm going to rename it we're going to call it hand ol for overlay we're going to put a peg on it and I'm going to make it a child of that hand and then we are going to put it where that overlay is and because we don't need that anymore we can just delete that and then we're going to come into the elements here and I'm just gonna untick overlay art and for this one I'm going to tick just the overlay art so if we come into this hand in the overlay section we've got this and then we got the rest the line and the color so that isn't for moving it around it's just for the the z depth and then we can put our pivot in the center around there and then make sure you do that for the other hand as well so the next thing we need to do is we need to add the logo to the t-shirt so we're going to come back over to this torso section here we're going to make another element we will put this uh here so we'll press ctrl r we'll just call that logo let's put it under uh, the neck hole there put a peg on that make it the child of the torso oh i just realized we've already got our a node for the logo here but we'll just delete that and what i'm going to do actually is 
connect that to the torso master and connect that to the torso master as well. So let's add that sun symbol. Let's bring back our character reference and I'm just gonna turn off the torso and then we can make the logo. So I'll start with that bigger circle and then I will control and paste that. It does nudge it out of place when you copy and paste it so that you know that you've made a pasted version of it. So you just need to press shift up and left to put it back into place. There is a, um, a new paste in place option that is in Toon Boom Harmony 22, which I do have, but we're just sticking with Toon Boom Harmony 21 for this. And then I'm gonna shrink that down, color that in. And then with this one, I'm gonna control paste it again. I'm just going to bring it out to around here. We're just going to align this to this ruler. So we'll nudge it over there. And then we'll get our line tool. And I'm just going to make it a two thickness. And I'm going to turn snapping on so that we can snap to that ruler. And if you do want to improve the quality of your reference image, you can select it, press Control Q when you're in the camera window and just put it up to max. And then I'm going to delete these sections here between our little sun rays. I'm just going to shift click all of those, bring those lines down to a two thickness. And I'm going to color in these ones. So yeah, there's our sun logo. We will put the pivot in the middle and we will cut that logo with the color art. And then we can get rid of of a character turnaround for now. Bring back our torso. So when we move this sun, sorry, it's the color art of the torso, not the neck hole. So now when we move that, you can see it is masked to the body. Fab. So for these eyes, I just want to change it so that this outer line here isn't showing is when we bring down our eyelid, it appears different from the drawing substitutions. So I'm just gonna go through and get rid. I do just wanna do some more blink shapes as well. So at the moment, we've just got this one, this one, and this one. So that's one blink shape, but we wanna add one more, and that is going to be slightly closed. And I'll talk more about the blinks later on as well when we're doing master controllers, because we're gonna have a master controller which is controlling the blink. You got that one, that one, that one, that one, and then that one. I am gonna make a deformer for the neck actually as well. And I think I'll put the neck in front of the torso actually. But yeah, let's move these control points. And for that neck, actually, I do want to make a an overlay as well for the back view, I think. So we'll take that, paste it there, bring these lines down. And yeah, let's stick a deformer on there. So let's find our display node that we made earlier. And we're going to stick it on there. Let's just move that. We could just make a substitution as well without that overlay. Uh, but that should be good. I've just realized the jaw doesn't have the pivot in the correct place. So let's sort that out. We'll just put it at the top. And uh, this pivot can be just at the bottom there as well. For the entire head pivot, I do just want to match it with the head master. So let's put those coordinates into there. And we're getting there. So the last step of this process is the handles. And this is just going to be to help us out when we are animating. So I'm going to call this handles comp and we'll bring it in front of everything. And we've got some handles here already. So we've got a handle there and we're just going to add a visibility node to this. Tick it off on soft render so that it doesn't render out. And then all of these handles that we've got can get rid of that. And I'm just going to move this to our handles comp. Same with that one. And we might as well do it for these eyelids as well. So you can see there we've got our, our handles for the eyelids and we can just plug that into there. And let's make some other handles now just for ease of use. So the handles that I'm going to do is I'm going to make one for the lower arms and the lower legs just for this side. And that is so that when we are animating it in a quarter or side angle. If this arm is hidden behind the torso, it's going to be a little bit tricky to select it. So I'm going to make a handle that will be placed out here just so it will be easy to select when it's hidden behind the body. I'm also going to have a head one and that's just so, you know, when you select 
you know, the I and you press B, B, B to go up the hierarchy. Um, you're not, you don't have to keep pressing it. You can just select the handle and it's all selected for you. So we're going to do one for the head and the face. Um, and the upper body and also the master as well. So the master is here. And I'm just going to move that to the center at the bottom of the feet. So we'll do head handle, face handle, upper body handle, master handle, arm far handle and leg far. We're just going to be doing it for those legs because they're the ones that are always going to be furthest away from us. And this leg will be in front of it, so you won't need a handle for that one. And then for the opposite view, it's just going to be flipped anyway, so that will still work. So let's plug all these in. And we're not going to make pegs for these. We are going to connect the relevant pegs to our handles. So if we go up to the master, we're going to connect that to the master. And then we'll take upper body. And then just more of the same. So the arm far, you could select the whole arm if you wanted to. However, I'm just gonna do the lower arm. So now we need to make the art for these handles. So I'm gonna select our controller color and I'm just gonna make a symbol representing the master peg. And then I'm gonna take that. We will paste that for the upper body as well. And I'm gonna place that around about here, I think. And then we will adjust the art for this to represent the upper body. Arm far. And the foot. And then we'll do one for the head and then the face. And we'll just make that underneath, make it a bit smaller. And we'll just put some, um, some eyes on there as well to make it look more like a face. And we'll cut all of that in. And just to make it nice and clear, select all these. Then we'll put a backdrop on it and we'll just call these handles. So now to select our head, we can just select that. It moves the whole head. We want to select the face. We can select that. The reason it's doing that is because the eyes are not cut to the jaw. That's the head color there. And that's going to these two. So let's just make two more cutters. And then we're going to put the color art of the jaw and the head which are just these composites, I think. So you can see here the color art from the jaw, color art from there, and it's just going into this composite. Plug that into there. So this is the color art from the head. So I think we can get rid of those two because we've got both the color art from the head and the jaw feeding into these ones. So if I select that face, there we go, it works now. Yeah, so we can select the upper body with that one. We've got our arm, we've got our leg and we've got our master as well. Marvellous! So I think that's everything. There will be some adjustments we might have to make in the future but that will become more apparent as we're doing the turnaround angles which is going to be in the next video and also when we test the rig in different poses. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to make two extra pegs and I'll just call this Sunny master. I'm going to call this uh, path and this one is going to be scale. And that's just for when we're going to be bringing it in scene. So for the path one, when we come to the walk cycle, we'll actually be animating it on the spot, treadmill style. So that path peg will allow us to move him along as he's doing that animation for the walk and run cycles. And then the scale, it's always better to separate out these pegs so that the animation doesn't conflict with each other. So that is the complete rig built. So in the next video, we are going to be starting the turnaround angles. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Fabulous. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can ask me live over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support really does go a long way. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, you can click that notification bell. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>